You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. All right, we're ready to go. Okay. Are we recording? Yep. I can't see Chaley. It's weird, and it's wonderful at the same time. <laughs> hey, uh, this is the uh, Doug Stanhope Podcast, uh, and I am joined, of course, with Greg Chaley, and uh, Christine Levine is with us on a, a beautiful Saturday, and uh, we are with uh, Jenna uh, who I don't. What, what do you prefer your job title to be called? Um, any any of them are fine. Like escort, stripper, sex worker, lady of the evening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever you I, want. I to always call liked it. call girl. Me too. Call girl was always like the 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 romantic mm-hmm. sounding one. I know. I agree with you. Call girl's nice because you're at their beck and call, mm-hmm. and you're a girl. Yeah. I like it. Uh, so, uh, so uh, sh- this is the easiest prep work. I mean, we have that's. I have a full. I, I almost needed another pad of paper, wow. as well as post-it notes from last night. Uh, our our pre-game conversation when I was full of uh, Negronis. Uh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, that's where I'm going. Thanks, my producer's telling me how to do my goddamn show. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you uh, you reached out to me because I guess you must have heard uh, us talking about the time we were in Montana and we were trying to get an escort out of the the weekly. Yeah. Yeah. On the show, and none of them would do it. They'd come and suck your dick, but but mm-hmm. they wouldn't come and talk about their business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you uh, you kindly reached out and emailed me and said that you would be happy to be on, and we're happy to have you. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm glad. I didn't expect it, but I think it'll be fun to like tell my stories and whatnot. Do you listen to the podcast regularly? <laughs> um, I listen. I kind of like binge listen to it when I'm doing something. For like a long period of time, so I will hear like five episodes at a time. That, that's weird because we get a lot of emails that from people that say they listen to us at work. Uh huh. Yeah. It's, just, <laughs> it's like humping for a long period. Yeah. Just have it in the background. You go ahead. Just don't yank out my earphones. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, I wish I could get away with that. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we'll we'll let's uh, do some uh, some. Uh, background uh you started uh escorting you're in the you know the southwest area and you started when you were 17 yeah i started actually in the bay area when i was 17 when i was in in college well wait you're 17 and in college so you're like in the yeah. mentha like accelerated program that kind of thing well yeah i was in my right. freshman year so i was 17 for a good Oh, portion of it and over the summer actually to be honest i kind of started like in high school as well but Mm -hmm. in a more less serious way how often have you told this story um you know not too often because um no one in my life really knows what i've done at all um because i come from like a really um like conservative background hmm yeah, I come from, my parents are, are immigrants from, from Ukraine and Russia. So like, I grew up really strict and so, so no one knows, which is why I try to be anonymous. Well, well yeah, you, you would have yeah, to be. Wanna, yeah. One of the many reasons, but that one is a big one. Yeah. Like I started pretty randomly. Like I, my parents were really strict about school and grades, and that's one of the things that kind of drove me crazy into like the type of angst you would need to go find fifty-year-old men on Craigslist to take your anger out on. I guess. <laughs> huh. You you've been doing this for ten years now. Yeah, at least. Uh, uh, uh. Are you are you more nervous doing this podcast than taking a call? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What well, what about your first one? 
Would you rather have gone on uh, on a podcast or taken that first date? Do you call them dates? Are they dates? Sounds... Yeah, dates. I think yeah, so. I'm definitely like the podcast is more fun. Like I get to meet two of my favorite comedians like face to face, and that's pretty sweet. Uh, whereas the you know the Johns are pretty lame most of the time. So the money is good, so it's exciting. For that, that all right. Well, I, I have a again. I have a giant mm-hmm. list, but so take yeah. us through your first experience and what what got you into it. How you were led down this dirty path? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the like, very very first experiences were back in high school where I would post ads as a joke, where I would say like, "Oh, give me this thing and I'll fuck you." Um, oh, I never. T- <laughs> when I, I was like, you know, at that point, even 16, maybe I was mad at my boyfriend and I would just put out these ads to prove to myself that somebody I was worth something and somebody wanted me, which is kind of sad, like saying it out loud. But I would say like, oh, buy me this like $300 thing and I, I will fuck you and people would do it. And so. Like, one of the first ones was I asked someone to buy me, like, a full-powered microscope. Yeah. For, like, wow. no particular like reason. So I can check for, so I can check for chlamydia yeah. before I fuck you. Just, like, yeah, it was one of the most stupid ones, but, like, someone did it. They, like, literally ordered it to my house. Like, a full, like, $500, like, full-strength microscope, and I met with them. And it was like this kid from Berkeley, from UC Berkeley. So it actually wasn't too scary because he was like younger. And then we had sex and it lasted like a minute. And so like, it was like really easy. And that was the first time I realized like, wow, I just like made more money than I'd like ever make doing anything just by like laying there. And it wasn't scary or anything. And that like led me into like just repetitively like doing it more and more. Yeah, the hot girl experience is way different than the fat girl trying to be a hooker experience. <laughs> tell you that right now. I, I did have in my notes, like, what's the youngest client you've ever had? Because I remember I was getting hookers when I was 18. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely guys, like, in their early 20s would be the youngest. Yeah, I don't know about teens, but, yeah, pretty young. Is 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 there is there a preference? For me, I as far as clients go, yeah, I mean, I like over time just started to be grateful whenever they're normal. (laughs) Like any, like within a range of normalcy, I like it's a relief because a lot of them are just so weird and gross that like if somebody is just a normal human being, I'm like, oh, thank God. (sighs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, that part's the same. Yeah, no, I've, 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 yeah. I've, I've been the, I've been the guy that just wants to talk because I know I'm too coked up to <laughs> really work this out. And when they don't have a personality, oh, it's the same. Right. It, it works both ways, is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so when, when's the first time you actually, actually got money and not just parting gifts? <laughs> Money, um, like an encyclopedia. The first time I got money it was still in high school. It was this like random guy with kids I met in a hotel, and I got two hundred dollars. And he like tricked me into doing anal. I don't know, and like mm. fucking him. Ta-da. Random. Oh, he had like a really tiny dirty. penis. It was like a three inch penis. So he was like, oh, come on. It, it's not going to hurt because it's so small. And huh? hard to argue with that, though. <laughs> yeah. And, and, then, yeah. and then he told me he had like a vasectomy and um, like had been tested. And I was like, at that point, young and stupid enough to just straight up believe him. So I did it. And luckily, didn't. Well, as long as he had a vasectomy, you can do anal. <laughs> oh well like I well yeah, I did like other stuff with him too, but like he really just lulled me into a false sense of security. So I saw him a couple more times and he lied about the vasectomy again and told me he like 
had received it within a time period that he had said the same thing like months before. Oh. Like, oh, I had a vasectomy three weeks ago. And then he said that again, like, three it's months ago. It's like his line. Yeah. 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 And then I was like, oh, shit. Like, what else is he lying to me about? And I'm oh. fucking yeah. embarrassed. So. Wait, really why, why were you in a motel at 17 years old? Well, I lived with my parents, so. Yeah. In a motel. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. So I had to go somewhere. Yeah, private. So, like, it was always oh. motels at first. I thought you were saying you were in a motel anyway, and a guy happened. Oh, no, to no. All right. No, I had a very normal upbringing, unfortunately. I'm glad to know that men lie to regular women, too, and prostitutes. <laughs> like, it's all, they just do that. Yeah, I have the same true. thing. So, yeah, I get it. So, so where do you go once you uh, leave the house? When does this become, like, all right, I'm doing this for a living? Um... Well, when I went to college, I got my own apartment, and at that point, I was just started to invite people over, or I would just drive to wherever they were, and I would is go to, through, like... Is this through Craigslist? How, how are you... So, yeah, yeah I started okay. through Craigslist, but as you might know, they shut down their personals a while ago, so I stopped doing that, like, through Craigslist, like, when they shut it down, but it started that way, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've been doing this for 10 years, and I haven't gotten a prostitute for far longer than you've been a prostitute. So yeah. I, 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 I don't know the, the timelines of what matched up with what. Like, again, I was going um, on a, the fucking back of a weekly, you know, <laughs> Houston Chronicle or whatever. Wow, yeah, I can't even imagine that. It was just it was so much anxiety. Like, it's just so... Like, from my perspective, it was just so legal, and I was always so close to being caught, even through, like, ambiguous ads online, so. That's, you know, that's a question we didn't even write down. Have you ever been arrested? Oh, yeah. No, no never. I always made sure to to play this, like, sugar baby, consensual, like, boyfriend-type thing so that I could always defend myself in case of were, were, were you were you ever dumb enough to do the? Uh, you have to tell me if you're a cop. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, uh, maybe a couple of times I got really paranoid, and uh, and asked for like ID or like work ID from the guy. But what yeah. what uh, Christine was uh, asking uh, pre-game, like what what are red flags that you, you go? All right, I'm not. I'm not doing this or yeah, you'll call I'm going to ask for ID. Mm-hmm. Um, like really overt questions about like exchanging sex for money. All right. Oh, yeah. so like, so this so is, he acts like he's talking into a shirt, like, okay, so I'm going to give you this $50. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then- for that $50, you're going to fellate me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically like if somebody's doing that, I just immediately, like really freaked out um usually guys understand not to and like you can sort of tell yeah it should operate like a drug deal yeah we're all talking in code (laughs) y'all kind of know i got it hey how much sausage can you swallow (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) how long is it gonna take you that's right I can eat three cheeseburgers, three point <laughs> five. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so you 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 left the Bay Area at some point. The Bay Area seems very pro sex worker. Yeah, yeah, it is. But still, like, I don't know. It's still really crowded, and there's like a lot of cops and. A lot of people pretend that they're okay with sex work or want to promote it, but then they're just, like, also horrified of it and don't understand what it is. So, I don't know. So, so, so you moved out of the, the safety nest of San Francisco? Well, and- sort of. For college, I moved to San Jose. Hmm. Yeah. More money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. sort of it's more competitive say, like tech guys you go oh they get shitloads of money and they're yeah. probably pretty boring but they're probably the weirdos like 
Patrick Bateman an American psycho. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, except yeah. it's really competitive. So girls are like lowering their prices. So in the Bay, people are doing stuff for like $60 and I can't do that. So it really doesn't work for me there anymore. It's just mm-hmm. like people are so competitive and prices go We're- down when that happens. We we were wondering like you, that that whole cliched expression of uh, like a, a sailor's payday. Is there an event or any events that you travel to where you go? All right, this I'm missing out. If I don't go to Super Bowl or the fucking the Consumer Electronics Convention in Vegas, or are there are there Sturgis? Yeah, are there places that you travel to like going? I'm gonna fucking make mad cash. Mm-hmm. No, I I think other girls do. Like sometimes in high season in Hawaii, I have coworkers that will go there oh. and sometimes like walk the line where like tourists will pick up prostitutes. Um, but I personally don't do that just because I'm lazy and anti-social. Oh. <laughs> nah, see, this goes into a, two other things that uh, someone here was saying that uh, the, there was a study done that uh, uh, prostitutes with pimps make more money mm-hmm. than they do on their own. And I said, I said, well, yeah, if I didn't have Hennigan, I would just, I wouldn't book dates. Right. I'd be lazy as fuck. That's right, what I they can, do. Yeah. Did a pimp put out that study? Cause no. Like- Economic <laughs> economists did. Um, I, I don't know that the yeah. money actually gets back to the girl, but they bring yeah. in more money because For they're sure, yeah. pushed to work. The yeah. same as I yeah. am pushed to work by Brian Hennigan, where I would uh, I'd be slothful. They get my booked own. more. Yeah, yeah, they more yeah. Money. It's definitely true. Pimps know where like all the places to go are, but they do take all of your money. And give you very little, so I kind of hate them. But no, do, are, are there situations uh, like Heidi Fly situations where there's someone that you can trust on a business level? It's uh, you know, on- yeah. You don't need a pimp; you need a manager, a talent. <laughs> um, at strip clubs, definitely, I've had managers and bartenders that were like kind of in charge of everything, and I trusted them, and it went well. Um. But, like, as far as an actual pimp that's propositioned to me, no. Those have all been super sketchy. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to take all of the money and then, like, you know, be violent. Because that's what they do still. Mm. When you say co-workers. Yeah. I picture a break room. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, there's a dressing room. Oh, oh, so you you work out of a, a club? Well, I've worked... In so many places, like dozens of places, um, and a lot of them are strip clubs that are actually brothels. So we have a dressing room, and everybody's fucking, and there's broken cameras in the back with tape on them, and it's like just a full-on brothel, but it's also a strip club. So mm-hmm. the coworkers I speak of are the girls that I'm, you know, in the back room with. And competing with and working with. Do you like to talk about this when you have a coworker? Like, because I know comics, they they're, talk they're such a rarity. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you like, do, do you have anyone that's on par with you uh, intellectually that you go, hey, let's just fucking talk about this is such bullshit? Yeah. Camaraderie. Almost never. There was like one really coked out girl that like really liked to talk to me, but it wasn't no. necessarily about what I wanted. To talk talk about, at but, you. Yeah. <laughs> when she Not was like, you. you know, into communism and kept saying we should unionize and got was like a little delusional, but like. <laughs> I think she's my favorite person got. though. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> Bless her heart. Oh my God. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, annoying for you, but I kind of think she's adorable also for trying to Co- even having the cocaine idea. Cocaine is really when you get your best ideas, <laughs> it it's, really but is. you don't have any follow through. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> get the, yeah, the yeah. Day. Hmm. Yeah, so she was like wow. sort of the closest to sort of friend I had, and then she randomly disappeared, and that's pretty normal. So, like, well, yeah, where do you she- think she went? Like rehab or? 
got out of the business. People told me that she had a night where she made a thousand dollars and she was just taking the time off. So oh. I don't know what actually happened, but I don't know. I, I, there's a uh, two part question that leads into this. What's the most m- money you made on a, a call? And what's the most amount of, I don't want to say tricks. It just sounds fucking cheesy, um, but uh, dates. Yeah. Wh- wh- how many men have you had in a 24 hour period? The most, and what's the most money you made on one? Jeez. Okay. So like the most in a day is probably around like 10 guys. Oh, that's so that's much work. That's some turnaround. Ooh, such yeah. is work. Mm. Yeah, because it's, like, really fast, and that's, like, working in the actual brothel, where if there's, like, a lot of guys, it's, like, almost, like, a couple of minutes each time. That yeah, well, I, I would think that that would mm. be the benefit, because there seems to be yeah. a hierarchy with, uh, you know, strippers who say, yeah, I'll do this, but I'd never uh, uh, be a hooker. But a hooker will say, well, yeah, I'd never do porn. Right. But I would, that, that's like a middle act. Uh, mm-hmm. I think a prostitute is a middle act in comedy has the least pressure because a, a local shitty open micer goes up and warms up the crowd. <laughs> That's true. You do 25 and the show's not on your back. Oh, I love and it. And then the headliner has to fucking carry it. Wow. Well, Porno, mm-hmm. you have to work. That's, yeah. You know, you're on set. A hooker, you just make them come as quick as possible and leave. That's, I, they don't have a market for that kind of porn. Oh, no. It's so no, good, you just though. get a heave suck. A heave yeah. Suck. <laughs> Time, time, people. <laughs> time is money. Yeah. Have, have you considered porn or have you done porn? Um, you know, I haven't really done porn. Um, I just, it's so little pay for so much work. And the people in it are really like to have people looking at them. They like the fame. Definitely not for the money. You make way more money stripping and hooking by, by a lot. Mm. Have you, have you been, uh, uh, well, first of all, 10 years, like how much has changed in the 10 years you've been doing this? Cause that's a, that's a long stretch and you're, you're only well, 27 in your twenties. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's a quite a bit of time, but like, well, and a lot has changed. Cause like you said, like you, Craigslist has gone tits up. We have only fans now. You know what I mean? Like the yeah, digital well, age has changed that everything. Kinda, didn't that mm-hmm. kind of rot up OnlyFans? Didn't that they stop paying people or stop letting you do shit? Or almost, and then they went back to it. All right. Yeah. But but uh, you, uh, you know, uh, psychologically, just how you go about the business now versus when you were first starting out. Like, what are some of the mistakes that you would tell a, a, a let's say eighteen year old you? Because it sounds sounds mm-hmm. a little less displeasing (laughs) yeah i would say do as little as possible for the most amount of money is the trick to the whole thing that you didn't know at the beginning yeah i did not know at the beginning i actually worked hard in the beginning i i really Uh put out and like tried to really like show myself as like so slutty and willing to do whatever um big mistake because then guys think they can take advantage of you and not pay you and stuff like that. So it's just like being that, a regular that, woman. That was my closer yeah, question yeah. was what <laughs> advice would you give to a, a young girl that's trying to get in your business? <laughs> yeah. You have to learn to read people, um, pick your clients carefully. Like, you know, yeah, it's like a game, you know? Yeah. Are you are you are, are you tired of it at all? Um, I'm semi retired at the moment. Um, so when COVID started, it kind of forced me and like my club closed, and it sort of forced me into retirement. And I learned, and I have been saving my money and learned to invest it. So like, I was able to pretty much. I'm, I don't really have to go back to work now. Um, well, that's great because that's why we had you on. Is do uh, you have any stock market tips? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually one of the the people that that got in on the GME. Um, I don't know if you heard about that. Game GameStop. Oh, oh. wow! 
Yeah, I got it on that when it was like twenty dollars and forty dollars, and then it went up to like four hundred or something. And uh, did you cash out? Um, somewhat. I, I cashed out a little bit, and I put more money back into it. And I'm like, um, been basically just milking it. It's been going up and down for a while now. So, yeah. Wow. See, you need a manager. Yeah. yeah. Hey, can we get a uh, uh, pandering charges if we're in, in management for her as entertainment? <laughs> we have a lawyer on site. He's going to look into it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I don't want to get really interesting. <laughs> if we steer business your way and they use promo code Stanhope, <laughs> <laughs> I legally. <laughs> 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 Wrong hole. <laughs> Listen, you might not feel like you're completely down and out at the end of your rope, suicidal, out of your mind, clock tower, rifle. But you know what? Every day we're on this awful, awful planet. There's something that's probably holding you back that you need to unload. Unload that stress and get it out. Talk to someone who's completely unbiased about your life. Someone who isn't going to judge you and take sides on anything. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback in your life. You'd be pretty surprised at what you might gain from it. See if it's for you. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Doug Stano Podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Stanhope. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Stanhope for 10% off your first month. That's Bingo. Bingo and Raider and Tracy are all here in the background. Hey. Hi. Uh, we're all very excited to talk to you. Let me go yeah. to some of my dumb questions. Did you? Oh, wait. Oh, the, no. She said the most money was. What was the most money? Oh, I didn't say the most money. Uh, yeah, that's probably around $4,000 in a day. Oh, man. Wow. From one date? Oh, no. From like two in a day. Yeah. Uh, the other, uh, d d have you ever been an actual escort? Because I know sometimes the girlfriend experience, have you ever had dates that didn't want to have sex at all? They just, uh, hey, I'm going to the company Christmas party and I want to look cool. Um, never like that. I've just had, I've had clients at strip clubs that just wanted me to sit on their lap and talk. And I've done that like quite often or just had dinner. Like, I had a client who was this, like, 75-year-old rich guy who just wanted to go to dinner a lot and take me shopping, so I just done that. Yeah, so pretty yeah. woman type like of that. shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what my, the question, what is the most accurate representation about sex workers that you've seen in a movie? Oh, Never. They're all so fake. Um, all right, then what's the worst? <laughs> uh, I'll let you think, but stand-up comedy, almost every movie about stand-up comedy is fucking wrong. From Punchline with Tom Hanks to, like, this is not at all how stand-up comedy is. So I, but I, oh, we still awful. watch them because yeah. it's about stand-up comedy. Yeah. So I would assume we have to. it's the same with you where you go, I'm going to watch this, but I know it's going to be dog shit and I'm going to be yelling at the screen. Mm -hmm. Never happened. There's no Girl. lockers in a brothel or a comedy club <laughs> green room. Lockers in a brothel. <laughs> yeah, there was like that the recent one with Jennifer Lopez. Hustlers. Strippers. Yeah, that one. I don't know what they're thinking. That was really dumb. And then, like, really old movie showgirls had an interesting portrayal of strippers, too. I, yeah, I remember that existing. But oh, I, yeah, I never saw uh, it. Yeah, I never saw it. Mm -mm. But, yeah, like, I, the Pretty Woman is the only one that comes yeah, to mind. Pretty Woman. But, oh, wait, dead. Leaving Las Vegas. Oh, That's yeah. a fucking great movie. I don't know how accurate it is, but it seemed pretty accurate. 
I don't think I've ever seen that, so I wouldn't know. Well, you're, gonna, you're gonna watch it tonight. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll pay you by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see Leaving Las Vegas. <laughs> or what about like the Sasha Gray girlfriend experience on Showtime? Oh, that was a real thing. Did you see that? No. no. I, was that the. I don't know. I've watched a lot of Sasha Gray's stuff. I'm not sure. She had like a movie where she was like played a girl with like a clit in her throat. Is that the one? Oh no, that's not what that's I mean. No, that's a that's a remake of Deep Throat. That's different. Wow. <laughs> but, the kids don't even know Deep Throat anymore. <laughs> but good job. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever uh, considered uh, Nevada legal brothels? Oh yeah. Yeah, I've applied to a few, but you have to give um half of what you make to the house. So I don't know. Oh, yeah. that, that's what put me off of it. I I calculated like what my day might have to look like and then you have to make I think about above a certain amount to keep your room for free. Yeah. Well the good news is you don't have to fuck Dennis Hoff for the job anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the I was really into the idea of going to the bunny ranch when it was like super popular and I like really fantasized about it, but then I don't know. I just lost interest just for money reasons, pretty much. But again, by like volume, they can yeah. get more clients for you or True. boost your profile. So I think that's what a lot of women thought that they were getting by signing up for that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I know I have gigs where I go, I'm never doing this again. Mm. Like, this is, fuck this business. Just because of one gig, you have to have dudes like that where you're like, uh, mm-hmm. right. all the time. <laughs> and, and Dennis Hoff, that's what brought that to mind. Uh-huh. Like, if you had to fuck Dennis Hoff, <laughs> and he was a, I, I wouldn't say a friend of mine. He'd call me a lot when I could. Anytime he could get press, him yeah. and Ron Jeremy were the biggest fucking press hound motherfuckers that anything that can get us attention. And I always felt bad for the girls on that show because mm-hmm. they could never be honest. Like you're being honest. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and go on. What was it called? Cat house. Or Cat house. Yeah. The HBO the show. HBO mm-hmm. show and yeah. go, I'm so fucking sick of this, but it's the easiest way to make money. I do that on stage. I go, I don't want to be here tonight. You know uh-huh. what? I don't even like it. I can get away with that. You can't do that on HBO and uh-uh. sell tickets. Yeah, I just lay there and I fucking roll my eyes and I fake it. <laughs> yeah. But you get some dudes that like that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Act Rapper like and ice. Yeah. Act, like, act like a body. Exactly. I had a guy tell me once that he wanted me to smell like bleach. <laughs> oh, no. Well, that's not good. Yeah. And he's like, Christine's don't done move. some sex work. I, I, I forget to bring that up. My producer didn't fucking remind oh, me. Oh, I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, but, I try it. Like my my situation being a BBW uh, fat girl. Hang on, let me just give her some background. She uh, she was a porn clerk for many years as she was starting stand up and mm-hmm. in stand up in in mm-hmm. Portland. Which I think you guys have a Portland connection. Uh, yeah, she worked at the whatever. fantasy for adults only in Tigard, Sandy, Burnside, at all of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so she did some side work here and again. Yeah, yeah. I tried to. Well, so I had a friend of mine um, who was a hooker, a fat her hooker, and she got me into it. And then um, it just turns out that all the guys like want to smell my feet or talk to me. And I just was like, well, when is the fucking going to start? Like when I'm here to bang and nobody <laughs> like these dudes were so pathetic. I had one guy want to roll his dick in my belly and make like a dick belly burrito and come in my belly button like that was his whole thing and smell um, like me and i was just like i can't i mean when's the dick gonna come in my pussy what are we doing so i got a little disillusioned with the whole thing because i thought this is not what I signed up for. I did not sign up for to let you smell my feet and talk shit about your wife, dude. I didn't. I'm not into it. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, they tried to buy me stuff or whatever, like shoes or panties that they wanted me to pee in or just like, I don't understand. 
like you are grateful for normal guys, but I never met one that wanted to fuck a fat girl. Just they're all just if they're paying to fuck a fat girl, they want to smell their feet. I <laughs> don't. They're just weirdos, dude. They're just oh, wow. weirdos. Yeah. So I mean, after like four or five times of that, I was like, oh, I gotta. This isn't for me. I don't want to be anybody's fucking counselor or burrito belly <laughs> vehicle. Now you're making everyone with a fetish feel bad. Well, they should. They're disgusting. (laughs) (laughs) Something's wrong with you. Go ahead. Swap stories. (laughs) No, I mean, honestly, (laughs) that sounds lucky to me. I would have been thrilled to not have to do anything other than, like, put my feet in their face. (laughs) But, like, I guess... You're dealing with people who are pretty hardcore fetishists, which can yes. be weird. Like they they're like can- obsessed with it. Oh, they wanted me to eat too. They were like, oh, "We'll take you. To- I want to take you to dinner, and I want yeah. to eat, like four cheeseburgers in a row." <laughs> or will you sit on my cake? <laughs> Not my face. Oh, but this. Ca- oh no, it was cake then the face. I bet that was what's <laughs> where it was going to go. But yeah, sit on this cake. Oh my god, it was weird. I'm like, I don't want sugar in my vagina. Yeah. <laughs> kind of degrading. I can like feel that's like kind of yeah. You feel sort of weird, like right. Maybe. I thought I was going to get treated like a normal prostitute. I thought yeah, I, was gonna I can like, understand um, the Jenna treatment. Yes, <laughs> I thought I was going to get the Jenna treatment, and then I just got yeah, just totally fetishized, and I was like, I can't. And on the one hand, you're right. Like, oh, at least they didn't want to fuck me. But then I was also kind of insulted. Like, why don't you want to fuck me? Have you ever, uh, Jenna, Jenna, have you ever had one that you thought I would have done this for free? Mm -hmm. Um, kind of. I mean, you get so addicted to the money. It's like you almost just want to charge everybody all the time. (laughs) So it's like, I've had some, some where I I enjoyed it too much and just kind of to the point where it's weird and don't feel like charging them, but then. It's hard. When, to when I was a kid uh, in Vegas, I was living in this uh, really sketchy trailer park when I was like nineteen or twenty or something, and uh, I was I was fucking with meth at the time, uh, and the trailer mm-hmm. next to me supplied it, and there were a couple, and I was going to go up to not the Bunny Ranch, the one uh, outside of Vegas in Pahrump. I was going to go oh. finally go to a uh, an actual brothel, and I was all excited, mm-hmm. and I. I cashed my paycheck and told my neighbors and I did a bump of meth and drank some beers and then did more meth and more beers. Uh oh. And, and he's like, well, well, how much are you going to spend? Well, my wife, she'll fuck you. Uh, <laughs> so, so then I just fucked his wife for 40 bucks or 60 bucks or something. And, uh, and then later on, she's fucking banging on my trailer and she wants to fuck me again for free, which kind of felt like a ripoff. Like, <laughs> like, hey, yeah. Yeah. You would have already. Yeah, like now I don't want to fuck. Yeah. And no, now I now I want what? my money back. That's it's right. just it's a weird dichotomy and the the morals involved versus the le- the, the legally mm-hmm. the, the the legal versus the moral versus the right and wrong. That's and right. Am I like uh it's confusing. I agree. Mm-hmm. So like if somebody talks to you too long, you know, don't you think like I could be like, I should charge this guy $40 for just talking my ear off. Oh, I do. Yeah. I don't yeah. let people just talk. That's one thing. That's another, like, advice thing. Like, when you're young, you, you let people take advantage and just talk your ear off. But when you, you know, get more involved in the business, you learn that, like, your time is literally money. And, like, every 10 minutes counts. And you need to, like, charge for it or tell them. Oh, I well, I, I, I was I, I was going to ask, uh, Jenna, uh, do you uh, charge for the act or for the hour? For the time, for sure, yeah. Because I'll kick them out. Like, if they can't come or whatever, the problem. Like uh, Another question. What's a good trick for Coke Dick? Mm-hmm. <laughs> to get There's them no off trick, get them unfortunately. <laughs> Oh gosh, there's no trick. You just, I've never like succeeded with someone who's too drugged out. Like, oh no. I've had lots of guys that were way too like on ecstasy, heroin, meth all at the same time, all kinds of stuff. And you know, you just kind of hump them and 
That, that's the that's the that's the person that wakes up the next morning. And go that ecstasy was fucked up. I'm like yeah. well, you were on heroin and acid and fucking. <laughs> I, I didn't feel a thing. How, how did you how did you know it was the ecstasy that's right. fucking wrong? Yeah, that's when you go for the credit card. You know, too disoriented to notice it. <laughs> yeah, ah. that that's happened to me. Uh, where I was, uh, I, I got an escort in uh, uh, Davie, Florida, mm-hmm. and uh, I. I was just really fucked up. And uh, she said, okay, she had, it was back in the day, she had to call in the credit card to her service. Mm-hmm. And she said, okay, what's the number? Okay. And then the expiration date. Okay. And the, uh, what's your social security? And I rattled it off and then went, wait, I just gave them my social security number. They what? shouldn't need that. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Later, I get a fucking uh, a, a collection agent for some phone bill that I, Oh. In my name from Florida. I'm like, I never lived in Florida. Not as it. Oh, so, nice. yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I've never actually stolen a card from someone. I was kind of just joking. But, like, I do take advantage of people who are way too fucked up and just ask them, tell them, like, oh, you said you were going to give me $20. And then I just say that again two minutes later. You know, I don't ever actually just take oh, like uh, it, like say, oh, I had a vasectomy. And yeah. Then- mm-hmm. Yeah. Good for you. I would do that too. I know people that do that to me because I don't remember things about money. Same thing. <laughs> they just tell me I owe twenty bucks, and I go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've had no uh, substance abuse uh, issues. I have definitely <laughs> like. Oh. Um, oh. But not in the way you'd think. So I, I got addicted to heroin like two years ago. No, um, that's exactly what we would think. That's mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. Well, because oh. I got into a car accident is actually the reason. So like, and the needle know. went through the windshield and stabbed <laughs> me in the arm. And, and I, bro- I broke my spine and actually ended up on like a three month Oxycontin prescription. Oh. And after that. I started to take, like, started to buy drugs online and then yeah. started to do heroin, um, which was really great. I mean, should have done it earlier. I don't know. I was always doing random drugs, but I was, I get sick really easy on drugs. So, like, I'm not good at being consistent with it. So I'll just be, like, puking and I don't know. Yeah, how did you get off of that? That's so hard. She didn't say she's off of it. Oh. The box zone. So I ended oh. up. On a suboxone prescription, which is like this legal thing that's like a half yeah. opiate thing that like helps you get off. I don't know. I I got off it pretty easy. So. Well, that's good. Yeah. Congratulations, because it's hard. I've seen people withdraw from heroin, and it just yeah, they sucks. go straight to GameStop. Uh huh. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Like yeah, that. it's terrifying. And I was also like on fentanyl because that they add it into like all heroin. So when right. I like did the P test, it was like yeah, lots of fentanyl in it. And it definitely like helped because I was like really um numb for like a lot of the work I was doing when I was like addicted, but like I've most of my career was like pretty sober with occasional, you know, alcohol and like random drugs. Mm-hmm. I love that you say career because that's what it is. Yeah, I, love I believe what you, so. It is. You, you don't also... look at you don't look at your career as like a misfortune or I could have done something different. It's like, a, but it's also a kind of social work. Like we need it. We need yeah. you to do this. Cause, uh, yeah, how many school shooters did you stop? There's no way to probably a thousand. Yeah, there's no way to put yeah. those numbers on paper. Yeah, I definitely sorry, was like, that went, what, that, oh, that yeah, went pedophilia yeah. again. Sorry, but yeah, well, I know workplace yeah. shooters. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah. school shooters. School oh, right, shooters. Right, yeah, right. sorry, I, I caught myself. College, we be met college. <laughs> uh, you, you must have. Uh, uh, been with people in a position of power mm. or or notoriety. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We're not oh. going to ask you to name names, it but it could destroy someone's mm. career that you've slept with. What? Uh, 
what yeah. what, what industry would, be, would that government, be? Government, yeah. celebrity, movies. Um, so people are in the governor. Yeah. Unfortunately, not not that prestigious. I, I ended up with people who were like a lot of tech people and somebody who owned a lot of jewelry shops. You can see Steve Jobs. He's dead. He can't sue you for yeah. slander. <laughs> Steve Jobs. She said it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I wish. I wish somebody that famous. But like, no, just a lot of a lot of tech people and like business owners. Like um, a lot of. A lot of software engineers specifically and um, like one really big client I had owned a lot of jewelry shops and he was really weird, but really rich. So it was good. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Jeff Bezos for sure has had hookers. You know yeah. that. I, I, you just tell by you, looking at him. Have yeah. you ever had a, a return client that you said no? <laughs> mm. Oh gosh, I feel like that's all of them at some point. I feel <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah, there was yeah one guy. He was a software engineer. He was Japanese, and for some reason, I thought he was going to kill me. I just became convinced. He was Probably like, not from the anal. <laughs> no, he like he had really pointy teeth and was really weird. Like he was like half my size and was always really interested in like everything except sex. He was always kind of like touching my muscles and like oh, I just felt like he was gonna try to kill me. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe it was the drugs. I don't know. Like he would always take me to these crazy like Michelin star dinners and then like sort of feel me up, but like in a way where it was like I was way bigger than him, and he just this like is he before she found out Michelin right. Michelin star dinners weren't a vending machine at a tire <laughs> shop. They're like, whoa. Yeah, I don't know. He just, you know, he. Well, he was like really obsessed, and when I said no, he just kept texting me. And, Oh, did you yeah, ha, did you ever have a, a time where you uh, told a friend what you did for a living and then they wanted to buy sex from you? Yeah, I did. Um, except it was like I went on like an OK Cupid date before, and I didn't like the guy, and I like somehow at the end of it threw in there that I like fucked for money, and he was like, "Well, I'll pay you." Ugh. Yeah, that's that's not a way to queer guys off the date. <laughs> no, that oh, doesn't yeah, happen. no, I fuck for money. He'll leave now. No, he's for going sure. to the ATM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was surprising though. You know, I thought a lot of guys get really offended when you tell them anything like that you would like strip or anything. This podcast is brought to you by another podcast, the World Record Podcast. Hi, it's me, the Bee Man. And I'm telling you, you should listen to the World Record Podcast. Go to worldrecordpodcast.com, watch the videos, join the Patreon. It's the funniest podcast in the world. Listen. If you put a frog in a kangaroo's pouch, is that safe? For the frog, mostly, I guess. Because I know in the kangaroo's pouch, that's kind of where there's a nip in there. So I'm wondering if the frog was put in the pouch and he sucked on the nip, would the kangaroo milk hurt the frog? Then to that, you would have to go to a veterinarian for that. Okay. So go to worldrecordpodcast.com. Watch all the videos, join the Patreon, listen to all the episodes. Just do it. You ever did Standing Doggy? Have you ever heard of it? Standing Doggy? What is it? Is it beer? No. It's a position. It's a position. You can, it's, it's doggy, but you stand. I don't know what you're talking about, Katie. Whoa! I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, wait, this would be a good place to uh, put in uh, an official ad for Stage Man Underpants, our newest favorite, bestest sponsor, stageman.com, promo code Stanhope. It's the whole package. Just go buy two pairs and you'll never have to buy another pair of underpants for your entire life. Just trust us on this one. That's stageman.com. Get yourself a pair Get yourself two pairs so you can wear one pair while you wash the other pair. 
And you don't really need to wash the other pair. You just like to look at them off your body and go, oh my God, I can't believe how good these make my body look when it's really not that good at all. Uh, DM me pictures. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. San Hope, I almost DM'd you a picture of me using them as a convenient place to hold my phone while I took a shit. But uh, I didn't know if that was appropriate or not. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> All right, what were we talking about? Oh, and don't forget. Uh, use promo code Stanhope, stageman.com. Use promo code Stanhope. That's the only way we get paid. You are listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. I, I, I'm, I'm asking a lot of these questions from personal experience. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what yeah. position was I in when I was courting you <laughs> like, I, w- I remember like getting rides home to the comedy condo from a gig and just openly telling the girl that yeah i'm gonna go back to the hotel and get a, a hooker and they're like what what yeah no like yeah it's just easier and how much is that and you go eh, probably 400 bucks or something but yeah. yeah and then occasionally they go yeah, you just don't want to. Sometimes you just want to fuck, and the, yeah, I've gotten laid off of that. Yeah, because she's like, "Well, I'll leave." <laughs> yeah, spend <I'll> money. <laughs> I'll, exactly. I'll get out. I'll leave. I promise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because that's what they say. What the Charlie Sheen said that you don't pay them for sex; you pay them to leave. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Charlie Sheen got no shit. Yeah, it uh, was yeah. you. Hugh Grant, mm-hmm. same time. Yeah. He got, they both got busted with hookers. Charlie Sheen went on the stand, stand. Heidi Flight. Yeah. If Heidi Flight called you right now, would you take her as a business manager? Definitely. But just her. Just yeah. her. No, just, just, just Lane Maxwell. No. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> just Heidi Fleiss. <laughs> I think Heidi Fleiss is a lot older. Someone heckled right here. Oh, she's yeah. too old. No. That's true. I mean, she definitely oh, looks older. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. That's true. Not. Yeah. I, I guess you know. Uh. I want to know what strip club you worked at in Oregon. Is it in Portland? It was in Portland, or can I ask? So I worked in like probably. Oh, I worked in so many in Portland. And one so of the probably I have worked at anything you're thinking of. Probably. Oh. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, the only strip club I've gone to willingly in uh, we don't all- talk about it. No, oh no, yeah, we don't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mary's in Portland. Oh yeah, Mary's was the best. Did you ever go to Mary's? I am aware of that place. Yeah, I never worked there because they have like a bias towards the older girls that have been there for a long time. So they wouldn't hire anyone. That's true. Jesus, are are you a fucking running back in the NFL where you're in your (laughs) 20s and they say, oh, there's an age bias because I'm in my late 20s? There was. It it was very... um, They just liked things done a certain way and had their girls. And that's it. Yeah. Right. I've heard that too. Yeah. Yeah. But well, they were female run. It's a mother and daughter that ran the place. Mm-hmm. When we were there. Yeah. I don't know. It did it change hands. Well, they, since they, then? they, I don't they know. lost their lease. They're moving to Chinatown. And it's like, oh. that, now the location, location, location. Yeah. It's kind not of Mary's part anymore. Of the alert. You don't have to put the your song on yourself with the jukebox. And that's not the same yeah, thing. Yeah. The dancers on stage would be yelling at like migrant workers going, come on. Mm-hmm. I have to pay for these songs. You have to pony up enough money for the jukebox. <laughs> Box because I have to pay for these <laughs> yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah. One dollar, they're peeling it. Uh, yeah. That, yeah, that, but Mary's was the best because it was it was like a, a your corner tavern mm-hmm. that if you wanted to look up and see a vagina, there it you is. could go, ah! Oh. And then you go right back to your drink and, and chatting. But what's the place in like North Portland where it was like a dusk till dawn type devil vampire? Is that Diablo's? Yeah, Diablos. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, I worked at those too. Yeah, mm-hmm. those were weird. I don't know. I had a friend of mine. We went there for her birthday, and she got a whole finger bang from a dancer. And I was like, "Oh, they're 
They're prostitutes. Yeah. Gotcha. That's okay, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was... Uh, she, uh-huh. uh, you used to... I don't know if you worked there, but you brought us to some uh, uh, sex, sex club. club. Oh, what was it called? Yeah. Um, Aces and Eights or something? Was, there was Ace yeah. of Hearts is what it was back in the day, but now it's yeah. got a different name. Velvet Rope, I think it's called now. But yeah, do you ever go there? I never... No, not in Portland. The only sex club I ever went to was the Citadel in San Francisco. Oh, that's a big one. That's fancy. Yeah. And I went there. Oh, oh. Pinky out. <laughs> <laughs> they serve caviar at their nude um, buffet. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, it was cool. I, I, I don't watch stand-up comedy, so I can't imagine what it's like for you mm. to think, oh, I feel like having sex. Oh, yeah. I never Do you feel have- like doing stand-up comedy. Just randomly? <laughs> no. I don't. I'm not one of those people uh, that loves to make people laugh. No, <laughs> no, me neither. No, that's great. I don't either. Yeah. Do you ever just like fuck for fun? Uh, I mean, relationships? Any of that? How? Oh, I gosh, don't so rarely. Like it's ridiculous. Um. Yeah, it takes me like a lot to really like somebody and really want to fuck. Like they have to have a really like amazing personality. Ugh. Like really. Yeah. <laughs> amuse me and like flatter me it just has it's like a lot yeah i get that like, probably know. more than like i think you're say. very pretty <laughs> 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 not really good at flattery he's terrible at it <laughs> he's trying though <laughs> oh yeah in relationships do you have any um like when was the last time you had a boyfriend i have a boyfriend oh, now i pretty much always like on and off, I've had boyfriends, but like I have one now. He's pretty cool. I've known him for like a long time, like the full ten years I've been working. Oh, I've known wow. him. Hmm. Do you have um, clients, uh, women clients too? Sometimes will you take a lady? Um, I would. I'd be like really into that, but almost never. Like I've had girls. Um, sort of come on to me or like push their boyfriend on me but they always shy away when it actually comes down to like touching um so sadly not yeah no, I, uh, every every threesome i've ever been in was a bust really yeah i think pretty well, much you're inviting the wrong people not baby i'll tell you that right now i just poked out of my head the porn all threesomes i had were super weird too like there's always like one person or something that like, didn't work. Well, with me, it was always the other two dudes were giggling too much. <laughs> other two dudes giggling. <laughs> <laughs> the other two dudes. Oh, I get, I get, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Someday. But that was a problem where you'd have a threesome and. It's two girls that oh, I can't believe we're doing this because they know each other yeah, or yeah. I don't know them. So I can't believe I'm doing this. And there's always one that's giggly. And yeah, oh, the one that won't go down on you is always there. Oh, uh, you need to have threesomes with fatties. No, oh, that's it's gross. In our mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time. I asked you earlier what advice you would have for, uh, for uh, people that wanted to get into your line of work. <laughs> Young up and comers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What advice would you give to Johns? Listen, I'm in Vegas for the Consumer Electronics Expo. I want to get a hooker. I'm 21 years old. I'm a fucking feeb in the business. I don't know anything about life. I want to get a hooker, but I don't know how. Where does that guy start and how does he go throughout the evening? Um, I would say go to strip clubs um don't go to like the most high-end ones go to like the more seedier places if you want a hooker Mm. and definitely like only go for the one that you're the most attracted to because the most aggressive hustlers sometimes are the most disgusting women oh and you do not want to get in that trap because they will like take advantage of you and not fuck you and just take your money. So 
you want to just make sure you actually really like her and what about like like eros guide was like the end of my hooker days i would go on mm -hmm. erosguide.com my lawyer is fucking he's sitting <laughs> like this right now <laughs> oh, i thought you're trying to dream up how we can do promo code stanhope eros <laughs> eros guide <laughs> so did you ever do like online website shit or were you always in the back room of some filthy whorehouse titty bar the second one because online <laughs> was just so much more terrifying to me and it, oh gosh online experience just sucks so much like it's so competitive and the pay people just always want to pay you the least amount hit her, just hit her. hang on i but someone has to beat my wife i can't do it all the time i have a job <laughs> sorry she all the hand flies yeah sorry sorry that was really loud Go ahead. I'm sorry, Sugar Plum. <laughs> oh, no, I just said no. I don't do online. I like quit that because guys always want to talk you down, and there's always someone willing to fuck for like fifty bucks or whatever. Uh. So I'm just like not about to compete with that. No, right? Yeah. yeah. A lot of times they don't show up looking like the picture. That's true. And that's why another reason that sex work should be legal. So you can sue for false advertising. <laughs> but that that should also Your belly's account not for... nearly as big as I thought. <laughs> You're not as fat as you said. <laughs> hey, keto. That's right. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no. False advertising. That's terrible. All right. I'm, I'm going through my list right now. Uh, but, but, yeah, do you want uh, prostitution that. to be legal so they can tax you or how do you feel about that? Because I knew a lot of like legal or, you know, weed dealers that didn't want weed mm -hmm. to be legal. Yeah, I think it should be legal. Like mm -hmm. if I was more selfish, I would say no, because I like taking all the money and hiding it and not paying tax. But, mm -hmm. you know, like it, for the greater good it should definitely be legal. How do you um, hide your money? Like, uh, don't, without getting too specific, I guess, but like, don't you have to keep your money in cash? Or... I just watched a documentary on right? money laundering today. Yeah. So, there's cryptocurrency um, investments. There's like a lot of different rules, and you know, I read up on all of them, and I sort of like move things, like distribute my money in different places. So, like. Um, it's all about just how you, you just have to not get noticed. Is kind You're of smart like, about it, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty careful, and I've worked other jobs is the thing, so mm -hmm. the IRS and whatnot doesn't really know where my money is coming from. I um, see plausible deniability. Did you do it for that reason, or were you like, all right, I'm going to get out of the business and work at Popeye's Fried Chicken? <laughs> That one, yeah. I well, no, not Popeyes. I well, like I said, I don't know if you believe me, but I have like a bachelor's degree in chemistry, so I tried to use it. I tried the, to work. Jenna, yeah. The fact that you used like, I know you're not going to believe me, but I like have. <laughs> I believe you because that's believe the you. system, the educational yes. system now. I like have uh, I, I'm a, like a neuros a scientist <laughs> and I, I like I can yeah I yeah can. we got it yeah. <laughs> that's so fun okay so you have a degree in chemistry yeah so we so tried to do that so you worked at like a chem lab or. yeah so I I tried that and I tried tutoring and teaching when I decided that the industry was like way too- Oh, hard. that's my fetish. Yeah. <laughs> Tutor me, honey. Oh gosh, yeah. I had a weird time tutoring and teaching. It was very awkward. I was not very good with children, no. And I had a weird time with the like teenage males. I was like way too close to their age and it was just like so awkward. You still know. are. Yeah, still. <laughs> you still are. Mm-hmm. Like if you fucked a high school student, it wouldn't make the wouldn't make the news. Nobody was like, "Oh, okay, of course you did." All right. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. They would always like try to take advantage of me because they could tell like we were just close in age. So they would always just, like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, change the subject and try to just like I don't know. I was not great with that job. It was also really humiliating because I hated having a boss. They were always like dumber than me and mean. So like, why would I work a normal job? You know. Mm. It's like us with club owners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. They have failed comics that mm-hmm. opened a club and now they. Right. Chili dog Dave Dennison comes to mind. Mm-hmm. I'll name names. Gary Bynum. <laughs> Same. Chili dog was yeah. just fucking beautiful oaf of a guy. And then once you get a comedy club, he was Ugh. a prick to everybody. I'm insufferable. Not to me. But everybody else. Do, uh, wh- where do you see yourself in 10 years? <laughs> Oh gosh! Yeah, are you gonna be a Tom Brady at this, like Air Force Amy? <laughs> I don't want to know. Like, uh, I I see myself maybe like retired totally, like just doing hobbies. Hopefully, oh, I wish I had hobbies. I'd and stop doing I comedy if I had any other interests. What is like? What is your hobby? What do you like to do? Um, I'm into like goldsmithing and like metalsmithing. She likes making jewelry, Tracy. Yeah, Bisbee's your town. Yep. Oh yeah. Hey, uh, this is a scam. I always thought of. Why is it that you can't like you can do pornography, Mm -hmm. but you can't prostitute? So why don't you just say we're gonna film this? And we're going to make a porn movie. And then. Yeah, there's no film in the camera that's not turned on or whatever. Yeah. Why, yeah. If you can do porn, why can't you hook? Yeah, I don't know. You're just acting. Same that's thing. That's why I have a lawyer here. That's right. He just keeps dipping his face in his hands going, mm-hmm. no. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So a lot of things don't make sense. Yeah. Legally. It's just to control women. Just to control their bodies again, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Hmm. You never really get in the uh, the political side of this, did you? Um, Oh, no, I have my thoughts. Like, I'm a pretty hardcore leftist, like, anarchist in my personal, like, political views. Like, anarchism, communism. I like those things. Yeah. And anarchism. That's... You, 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 that's all holes are available. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're everything but conservative. An anarchist and a communist, they're not necessarily the same thing. Well, I, I like a lot of leftist theory. Like, um, I think they're, they're related. Like, like Karl Marx always said that the last, the last phase of like his idea of socialism would be anarchy because people would be like doing it naturally. They'd be like self governing and I don't know. You, I, 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 I love the way you say Karl Marx always said, like he's drunk at your bar every <laughs> night. And he's always saying this. I, I, Karl read a lot Marx of, I read a lot of Marx in college. I guess I was brainwashed by my philosophy professors pretty well. So I'm happy about it. Karl Marx just went oh. on and on. Yeah, that guy. Ugh. <laughs> He's fine when he's not drinking. But he but puts yeah, a he, couple shots of vodka. And yeah, uh, you get him lubed up and he's Whoa. all about the anarchy versus communism. <laughs> socialism, and socialism and blah, 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 blah. blah, blah, blah. Yank, yank, yank. <laughs> Do you want to fuck or not? It's a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> What's with those pubes? Are you orthodox? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah okay that brings me to a question um what what kind of uh, penises do you prefer to work with you know so Nor- normal ones are the best normal ones yeah <laughs> normal because i cannot tell you like pe- not like nearly and- like corkscrew like a pig's tail mm-hmm. what do you mean normal um normal 
like normal size, I think, normal functionality. Like I cannot tell you, I mean, there's average, but I feel like nobody's average that comes to me. I always get like, like really either like really tiny, like clit penises or like monster penises. I very rarely encounter just like a normal penis. Oh, that's interesting. I get, so when I get one, it's like, oh, great. Like that's, easy to work with. I know what to do there. Um, yeah, so that's Probably great good when that happens. Yeah. I, why, don't, why don't we have a, 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 a call girl that we can sponsor as an, like, I, I, you're, you're in a good place. You're remaining anonymous. But if we had a, a call girl we could sponsor, that would be very, very funny. Yeah. Like we were going to put my last special out on uh uh Pornhub. Oh. Uh and then they got into a bunch of shit about fucking having rape uh what do you call it? revenge porn oh. and fucking underage mm-hmm. girls and people that didn't know they were getting filmed and that was a yeah. thing and I'm like all right, we can't do that now. Can't yeah, participate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we right. uh, but yeah, I would love to have my fucking special out on a porn yeah. Sight. Yeah. That was my that point. Would be very funny. Oh, promo codes. Like if a hooker oh, yeah. you could sponsor. Sponsor. Yeah. yeah. That would yeah, be yeah. good. I'm trying to figure out how, how this could work, Chaley. I, I went into Hennigan mode. How can we have her where we vet the John? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, no. No, I know no, it's a terrible no. idea. <laughs> well, what if what if he just love, said, I, I heard you on a podcast, and then so promo, you know, he she they just say the word. Jack and Dino would be the first one fucking calling, and then we'd have the creepy story. Because you know that guy's oh, nothing but creepy stories the with the escorts. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. have no factual information. I've never even talked to him about it, but uh, I just but you just know you, you can tell by the smile that he's fucking 100%. weird. <laughs> And then abusive afterwards. Mm-hmm. Not physically, maybe, but no. verbally for it sure. It tears them down. Oh, my they God. They cry. They go what away a, crying. I yeah. hate that guy already. And he's a good friend of mine mm-hmm. for the things he's probably mm-hmm. done to prostitutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm, I'm I'm running out of notes here. Uh, but I'm fucking very... Uh, yep, that's done. I like the most afraid. Yeah, what was the most afraid you've ever been on a call? Um... Definitely the micro penis guy when I was I was in college and I um answer or somebody responded to my ad saying that they were like six feet tall and like have a seven inch penis and whatever and I I didn't believe that exactly, but I thought, okay, this might be like a normal looking dude. So well, I, cause you're from the Ukraine. You do, you do metric. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay. Um, I invited him over. I was super drunk. So I just trusted everybody. Oh. And, um, he comes over and he's like, he's huge and like really red in the face and just like looks really angry. Hang on. You're breaking up. You're breaking up. Oh. Um, Hang on, once it was it broke up at the worst possible moment. The micro penis guy was really huge. Yeah, like he was he was like, I don't know, like three hundred pounds, like really big. Um Oh, fat. Right. Oh. And like really but like very angry, like like he came with cocaine. Oh. Ah, we're losing you. God damn it. Oh no. Hang on one second. <sighs> Kaylee, get on the roof and adjust the antenna. This is the best part. Shit. What are, are you running out of minutes on your prepaid card? Is your cricket your boost? <laughs> All messed I have up. Really good, oh, I have really shit. good the internet. How come is it not working? Right. Yeah, it's us. Can you it's hear us. me? It just, yeah. Okay. So he was really huge and fat and three hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you brought cocaine, so I figured that's like could be why he's like acting really like angry um mm-hmm. so we like we drank and smoked and like did drugs together and he had a really high-pitched voice like a girl and um then i was like getting really nervous and sort of shaking because he's just giving off these really weird vibes and then he pulls down his pants 
and there's no penis at all. Mm-hmm. Like it's blank. Is it high pitch, Eric, or is it extreme Elvis? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's it literally the like the size of a of a clit, like a normal sized clit. It's like there's like just a button there. And he gives me this, like, angry look, like, this is your fault, woman, you're gonna pay. Like, this really fucking, like, he does this all the time kind of, like, thing, and he tells me to, like, suck it, and, like, so I just listen, and I just try to do something with it, and, um, he starts, like, really furiously, like, kind of trying to, like, masturbate it, and it's, it's so gross, it's, Really, Ugh. is a true like. Well, now you know how every man feels when you go. Just lick my clit. <laughs> what? Where? <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Why? Yeah, I know. Okay, touch it. I don't know. <laughs> you know a lot of three hundred pound folds. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, it was like it was yeah. pretty terrifying, but like the scary part was like after when eventually after like an hour like he can't come I don't I don't know if he's like functional at all and I tell him like okay I really need to get going um and so he gets up and starts kicking stuff over in my apartment like angrily and refuses to Uh pay so he just starts like kicking over my cat's litter box and just like so I just like opened the door and I stood like in the door. It was just like really loud so the neighbors could hear. It was just like, hey, really need to go. And then luckily he did, but like no money. And it was, I was like really freaked out afterwards. But, yeah, that was the most I, scary. I, don't, I don't, I don't do like, uh, 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 what's that shock journalism? Like, uh, mm-hmm. what do you call that when you get in your face? But I'm going to read yeah. a review. Gotcha. 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 No, and it's not Gonzo. It's like, uh, like they gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Journalism. This is a Yelp review from that guy. Uh, went to this l- lady's apartment, <laughs> obviously underage. Doesn't know a fucking a uh, great small penis when she sees one. Uh-huh. Who has a cat box in the fucking apartment where I'm trying to have sex? <laughs> of course, my penis shrunk into my big fat belly. She made me fat. All right, I was, I was trying to riff. I she should never do improv. <laughs> I appreciate the terrible glasses to wear on this show. Uh, when are you coming to Bisbee? Because oh, we're passing the hat. Oh, yeah. When you say See? semi-retired, it made me semi-erect. Wow. <laughs> uh, pat myself on the back. <laughs> yeah. I do live pretty close to you guys. I think yeah, no, we, we're not giving away your location. And I, 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 I said to uh, oh, okay. my pimp, uh, Mr. Hennigan, I said, uh, he goes, so where does she work out of? And I said, yeah, I don't think she's working out of there because I can't imagine. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like if you were a hooker in Yellowstone. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, yeah. the geyser made me so hot. I can't wait to come on some strange girl's tits. Yeah, I definitely I do not work here. So, yeah, you're right. It's a long commute. <laughs> yeah, actually. So, yeah, I was driving quite a bit, like, doing weekends when I was working, like, before COVID. Yeah. I, I We asked you earlier about your first... Uh, experience Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what was your last oh gosh last like sex or last just stripping your job okay yeah instead of date job Job. gig Uh, gig yeah that's perfect perfect gig where's your last gig oh okay that's i remember this was like this really old guy um He's like a 75 year old man. He was the one who owns like all the jewelry shops. Um, and he wanted me to give him a hand job, but he didn't know if he was capable of getting hard or not. So. Well, it was like, he could, he kind of half got hard and I was able to do it, but it was like one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. Taffy? Uh. (laughs) 
Like he oh, had buddy. like yeah. worms out of his belly button. It, like I don't know, something was wrong. Like he had like stuff coming out of his belly button. It was like crusty, kind of like poop like substance coming out, and like he was just covered in sores. And it was like I almost gagged, like trying to give him a hand job. And it was oh gosh, it was very surprising. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't expect it to be like that. Oh, Hanks in Philadelphia. <laughs> it worked. I mean, eventually he came. It was just a hand job, and I got a lot of money for it. But like, uh, wow, how much? So Worth it? Worth how it? much? Oh, I got a grand for that. Just that's a, this, we're with the IRS. This is a sting operation. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, I guess you can write off the uh, poop in the belly button. As oh, a, this sex work is work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yuck. Yeah, it was I don't know if it was poop or something. It was like crusty. I don't know. I get one hooker <laughs> at the beginning of the night to shit in my navel. <laughs> then I get another girl. She has no idea. She pulls on my semi-hard taffy cock. I come, I go scrape that out of the belly button. It's poop. Everybody <laughs>, laughs. This killed in the cat skills. I don't know why it's not killing with you. <laughs> oh my god, this is so funny. Uh, yeah. Oh. As I get older, I think about doing it with an older man, and I'm just ugh. yuck. Yeah, I he just uh, turned me so off. Listen, I, I I fell asleep in a like a. Uh, 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 night before Christmas, I, uh, 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 a pajama, mm-hmm. you know, like a, a onesie, a onesie, mm-hmm. but not with the legs, with oh. the, 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 the dressy kind of part. I see. And I evidently I, I fell asleep on the couch with my fucking balls and asshole hanging out. And bingo took a close up photograph of that. <laughs> Oh. I will never masturbate again. Like it was so disgusting that I won't. Like I shower with pants on. Oh, no, and I don't even know how to delete. She texted it to me, and I don't know how to delete it from my phone. I know that if I ever fucking killed a guy, and the cops are onto me, whatever I deleted, they can bring back yeah. out of that phone. No, I'll find it. Yeah, they'll, they'll find that, and that's going to be my fucking headshot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I only said that you're doing your In lawyer. the Bisbee Observer, it's going to say <laughs> local comedian died, and instead of my face, they're just going to uh, put that picture of my asshole cock and balls spread leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking grotesque. I wouldn't even fuck Dave Rader with that cock and balls. <laughs> for another I'm sure it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it can't I've enjoyed be that bad. Our time I have together. to see. I have to see it now. It can't be that bad. Oh, it's fucking grotesque. No, no you no one's ever going to see me alive again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. She'll show me. Yeah. Uh, 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 Jenna, uh, I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was fun. I hope you keep me up to date on what you're doing. Yeah. Glad you're off heroin. Mm-hmm. Good job. What are you drinking out of that? Is that actually a, 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 a copper mule? You're drinking out of a so, copper No, Oscar. I have whiskey and water. That's it. <laughs> all right. Nice. Wait, you said that's it. Like, that's all you have left to eat. Oh, I was I was hoping it had like soda or something, but I didn't. So yeah. Uh, well, we don't have a yeah, uh, Moses. What? We don't have an official call girl of the podcast, but you're it now. Well, thank you. Well done. I appreciate that. I'm really happy to have gotten to meet you guys. Especially Christine, I had like no idea you'd be here, and I think you're really funny. So, oh, uh, thanks, thanks. I'm really happy to get to see you. Yeah, she was the first person we called after we talked last night. Like, oh, oh. she's gonna get Christine Levine <laughs> I, over here. I thought I was like Chad didn't show up. So I was no, like, <laughs> <laughs> like who else can we get? 
Yeah, like I specifically would search up episodes with her in it because she's like really funny to listen to. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's really sweet. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, uh, we'll Venmo you the hour's worth plus tip. <laughs> okay. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Okay. We love you. Yep. All right. It's good to meet you. Bye. Hey, Bingo, take us out of here live. <laughs> okay. Hi, sweetie. And okay. Bye-bye now. <laughs>